so let's compare now for a moment and be sure that we have an accurate understanding of the differences in the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles. What would you say is the primary difference? Well, definitely, in my view, it's the ab and adduction. But there are also differences in sizes and origins and insertions and in simply the number of muscle bellies. Again, we're moving back to the schematic drawing so it's visually simpler for you. Here we've taken the same view of the hand and we've illustrated just the muscles of the dorsal and interosseous. We know that we have both dorsal and volar, but look how different they are. They have different functions, although these muscles are usually considered as a unit. So I would say these are singularly the most important points to remember. Even though the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles are considered to be opposite in their ability to ab and adduct, they do the identical functions. Yes, they insert on the opposite sides of the fingers, one on the radial and one on the ulnar. They never insult on, insert on the same size. And they are opposite in the motions. But all interosseous muscles, I would like to repeat this and really stress this, the interosseous muscles are the primary metacarpal phalangeal joint flexor. I am going to repeat that. The metacarpal phalangeal joint is primarily flexed by the interosseous muscles with equal influence from both the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles. Additionally, the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles have a direct influence on interphalangeal joint extension. They participate more with the lumbrical in doing this, but the lumbrical has relatively little influence on metacarpal phalangeal joint flexion in contradiction to many common beliefs. In addition, both the volar and dorsal interosseous muscles provide the ability to rotate the proximal phalanx. One would rotate it one direction and the other the other direction. So it's my hope after this presentation that you no longer think of the interosseous muscles as one group adducting and the other abducting. Think of them as a team that work on each side of the finger to do the same things. Metacarpophalangeal joint flexion, interphalangeal joint extension, and rotation of the proximal phalanx. These are the key components of the interosseous muscle contribution to the ability to flex and extend our fingers and to move them in space into these precise positions so that we can accomplish fine motor tasks. Because the ulnar nerve inter usually innervates all of the interosseous muscles, loss of the ul ulnar nerve function in the hand is a tremendously debilitating uh, event for the hand. Loss of the interosseous muscles is loss of significant power of the fingers. This illustration of the ring finger shows how the volar interosseous muscles and two bellies of the dorsal interosseous muscles blend together to be the controllers of motion of the ring finger. They are working as a team to flex the MP joint, extend the IP joints, and to alternately rotate in, in one direction or the other. The volar and dorsal interosseous muscles have identical functions with the exception of abduction and adduction. I'd like to repeat that to really stress it. The dorsal and volar interosseous muscles do the exact same thing in influencing finger motion except for rotation of the proximal phalanx. The dorsal and volar interosseous muscles both 
Now, not all the bellies, because we said there are some dorsal bellies with the dorsal interosseous muscles that insert into bone. But both dorsal and volar interosseous muscles insert into the dorsal apparatus. Therefore, they absolutely have to have the same functions because their insertions are identical. They just happen to be on opposite sides. So if they insert into the dorsal apparatus, what are their functions? We've talked about this and repeated it multiple times. Here in this schematic drawing, we've added all of the dorsal and the volar interosseous muscles, which means we've added two bellies for each dorsal and only one belly for each volar, with the color coding accordingly. The red or pink color represents the dorsal belly, excuse me, the volar belly of the dorsal interosseous muscles. You can see that together the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles provide balance to our finger motion, with indeed perhaps the exception being the little finger. Having, depending on the abductor digiti quinti for the majority of its influence for interphalangeal joint motion, which unfortunately needs to occur often simultaneously to the abductor digiti quinti also abducting at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. The index finger, now we are illustrating all the dorsal and volar interosseous muscles. We see the balance coming from the different groups of muscles. Also on the long finger, I, you notice I have crossed out volar interosseous muscles because there are none. We are looking only at dorsal interosseous muscles, controlling the long or middle finger. And on the ring finger, we again see the balance between the volar and dorsal interosseous muscle influence. But on the little, as we've already said, there are only volar interosseous muscles. And I think we all question the balance because we so frequently have problems with this little, with the little finger and in regaining full interphalangeal joint extension. Now if we put all of these back together and we add an abductor digiti minimi, we indeed see what the normal control would be of the interosseous muscles of the hand. We see clearly how important they are and how devastating and how much is taken away from the human hand in the absence of the ulnar nerve function. Imagine that all of these were not functioning. There's really very little left that influences the dorsal apparatus. We would have the extensor digitorum communis, but it doesn't do very well distal to the MP joint unless you block the MP joint, as we know. And you would have the lumbrical in the index and long fingers if indeed your usual innervation by the median nerve was innervating the lumbricals. So loss of the interosseous muscles is a huge functional loss to the human hand. Mm -hmm.